Well, again, good morning. As the, the monsoon is pouring outside, I do want to say welcome on the inside. It's great to have everybody with us today as we anticipate Labor Day tomorrow. And if you're just in town, if you're on vacation, if you're just kind of hanging out and visiting some friends and family, I want to say welcome to this family. Great to have you as a guest today. And if you're joining us today for the first time just because you're looking for a church home or are just looking for God, looking for something, maybe looking for a message from him in the midst of your life. I really want to say welcome. It's great to have you. Uh, we're all searching together. And as I say every Sunday, we have a God who's searching for us more than we're searching for him. And, and we're going to be found today by a God who has a lot of hope for us in the midst of, of anything that we might be facing in life. Had a great week this week uh, with God. Uh, took our staff to Diamond Head, Mississippi. Took the staff on a little retreat just to kind of maybe anchor us together in unity as we begin the year. Uh, great things are happening here in our parish family. I'm not quite sure if you have noticed the growth that we have experienced in just in the last year. But, um, you know, on any given weekend, um, we will sit here at Christ the Redeemer uh, definitely probably the third largest congregation in the diocese, sometimes even the second largest congregation in the diocese. So we have grown uh, a lot just in the last year. And, and so we've made some adjustments to our staff. We've added a couple people to our staff so that we can better serve you and love you. And uh, so just took the staff to Diamond Head, Mississippi this week, just to bless them, to pray with them, just to kind of bring us together. And we had a great week. Um, I have to say publicly that we are, 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 we are blessed with an exceptional exceptional group of men and women who are committed to you, who are committed to, to our family, who are committed to, to, to Christ. And uh, just a great week for us to be together. We, we, we played a lot. We laughed a lot. Um, we leaned into the Lord and asked him what's his vision for us as a parish family. And I just felt there was an anointing in the week across the board. For me personally, it was an exceptional week. I, I loved being with them. I love the vision casting part of, of leadership and being a pastor. And I just felt God's presence all week long. You know, when I, when I asked God to speak to me, I really felt he was there. His words were clear. Um, the Bible passages that, that he really placed in my heart, I thought were not only appropriate for me, but for us as a staff. And just an exceptional, exceptional week of, of God's closeness and his fidelity. And then let me tell you what that happened. I came home on Thursday night, really tired. I was getting up early during the week and preparing some things for the staff and kind of leading us through the process. And came back home on Thursday night, really, really tired. Like a good tired, like a beautiful spent, but you know, just in my humanity, like the, the tank was on E. Um, so as I prayed on Thursday night, the prayer was a little flat, actually, to be honest with you. It was a lot flat, you know, it was like the vibrancy and the intimacy and the ease that I felt in Diamond Head was, was not there. And, and I surely struggled in my prayer on Thursday night. Woke up Friday morning, um, you know, still a, 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 little, a little in need of some rest and some sleep and, and kind of struggled in prayer on, on Friday morning. I tried to pray again uh, Friday night and just, again, nothing. It, it just seems like every time that I went to pray, like it got progressively drier and drier and harder and harder, and, and I got more and more frustrated and, and just woke up on Saturday morning just really discouraged. And I just... Maybe just to be honest with you, I think it's important that as a father that, that you know my heart. And I just woke up yesterday morning really discouraged. Um, not about us as a parish family, just I think things are going great. I love you and I love being here and love our staff and had a great week. But just discouraged in my prayer, in my relationship with the Lord or in, like in, in my experience of just being with him. Like things at this week were so easy and since I've been home they've been so like dry and just some natural easy discouragement just kind of kind of placed in there and when I'm discouraged it's easy for me just to turn in on myself and to start analyzing everything and and it seems like I moved from like spiritual discouragement or discouragement about spiritual things just to almost like an overall discouragement it's like that that discouragement with God just kind of like like filtered into other things like just like doubting myself as a leader and doubting myself as a pastor and doubting myself as a prayer. And it's like the discouragement just kind of like, just kind of snowballed a little bit. And I just, I share that with you for, for the only reason just to, I think, 
to name what I think a lot of all of us experience, and that is sometimes in the spiritual life we're going to get discouraged. You know, sometimes we're going to try things in our spiritual exercise, and it's not going to bear the fruit that we wanted. Or sometimes I think we all know that we're going to try to pray and either nothing's going to happen or we're going to feel like we don't know what to do or it's not going to bear the fruit that we want or we're not going to get the answers that we want. And I think if we're honest, all of us know what it's like to be a little discouraged in the spiritual life. I think we all certainly when it comes to prayer, can acknowledge that there have been moments where either we haven't known what to do or we haven't known how to pray or we just haven't been satisfied with our experience of prayer. I think we all do. And I think if you look at your heart, you can probably acknowledge that right now. I think it's important because I think we're all searching. I think we all want more. You wouldn't be here. You wouldn't hang in here Sunday after Sunday if you didn't want more from the Lord or if you're just joining us today for the first day. Hey, you wouldn't be here if you didn't want something from the Lord or if you didn't have a desire for God to speak to you in some way. So we all want God. But we can often get discouraged. So what if today God could speak to your discouragement? Or what if God today could speak to our desire for prayer to be easier or for us to hear him easier or just for the spiritual life to be easier? Or what if God today could speak to the discouragement? Like, would you want that? Like, if if God had something to say to us right now, would we be willing to lean in and say, yeah, like, I want him to speak to me? Because Jeremiah, he's discouraged. The first reading that we had proclaimed at Mass today, like Jeremiah is struggling. I want to go back to a few of the passages that that we find today in the first reading from Jeremiah. And I just want you to listen, and I want you to hear, listen to Jeremiah's heart, the tenor, the tone of his heart. Listen to his discouragement. He, He says, You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. He does not sound like a guy who's on fire. He does not sound like a man who is thriving in his spiritual life. Jeremiah, like he sounds discouraged, doesn't he? Listen, he says, whenever I speak, I must cry out, violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. So he's trying the spiritual life and he's trying spiritual exercise and all he's getting is derision all he's getting is reproach all day long listen he says i say to myself i will not mention him any longer i will speak his name no more like he's given up he is close to just giving up on the lord he's had enough the discouragement is too much like it's just too hard he says i grow weary. Man, like does that not sound like all of us sometimes, huh? You should get weary sometimes of trying and it not bearing fruit, huh? And like you, you hear his discouragement and I, I think it sounds like a lot of our, like the voices in a lot of our heads, huh? I just, I just want to encourage us today with, with what is, okay? So let's just kind of really encourage us all today and just be honest. I know that we're in week three of this series called Back to Basics. We're uh, the last two Sundays we've been on a journey together. The first Sunday, I, I encourage us all to prepare for Sunday Mass. And, and, and maybe some of you did that, and maybe some of you have prepared for the last two Sunday Masses. You came in today ready, you read the readings, you prayed with the readings, your heart's disposed, you know exactly what you're listening for in the readings today. And some of you have actually done well preparing for Sunday Mass the last two weeks. I challenged us to do that, and you've done that. However, I know a lot of us have just struggled with that. 
Maybe you haven't had the time to do it and you wanted to do it and you just feel discouraged. Or maybe you did it. Maybe you actually did it the last two weeks and you came in and it just hasn't affected you. You haven't felt like it has affected you the way that you thought it would. And maybe your expectations of what you wanted to happen have not been met. And with the first challenge that I offered to us about the back to the to basics, just preparing for mass, maybe you have struggled and you feel discouraged. Last week, I talked about how it would be important for us just to try daily mass. And I just kind of cast this, this vision. Of, imagine if we were receiving the Eucharist more and going to daily mass more and what impact that would make in our lives. I talked to you about what it made in my life. And maybe you did that. Maybe you went to daily mass this week and it was great and you had a great experience. And you can't wait to go one more time this week or two more times this week. Or maybe you're considering making a, a real intentional shift about trying to go every day. And if that was your experience, awesome. I am so proud of you. But I also want to acknowledge that for some of us, you tried to go to daily mass this week and it didn't happen and you might be discouraged. Or you did it. Maybe you went to mass one day and you thought I was going to be there and I wasn't there and, and, and maybe it didn't meet your expectations or maybe you went somewhere else and the priest didn't meet your expectations or, or maybe you went to daily mass and everything was there and it just it didn't feel like Sunday mass and you just kind of left a little flat. Like I know that with the second challenge, some of us may be excelling there and some of us, maybe we didn't do it or we weren't satisfied with our experience and we can be discouraged. Well, let me take it one step further. In the last couple of weeks, I have, from the depths of my heart, dreamed with you about what it would be like this year if this was the best year of our spiritual lives. And I think a lot of us, when I see your faces, when I say that, I know that we want that together. I can see it in your hearts. And, and if in the last two weeks or in the last two years and last two months or just whenever, you've tried to pray just in general and it has not met your expectations, or you don't know what to do. Like you hear me up here, you, you, you hear me thunder away and say, let's pray here and go pray with that and let's make a holy hour. And maybe you just don't know what to do whenever you open the Bible. And it can be discouraging because we can want the Lord, but we just, like, how do you take the next step? So hang with me here today. Just stay with me. Because the third thing that we can do to get back to the basics is just is be intentional about prayer. Like God wants to meet us in any place where we're growing, and he wants to meet us in any place where we're excited, and he wants to meet us in any discouragement. And he wants to meet us, and he wants to teach us how to pray this year. So the third thing that we can do this year to make this year the best year of your spiritual life is we can pray. And, I'm, and, and, and specifically, with the Adoration Chapel just right there, where I think the only parish in the diocese, or one of the only parishes in the diocese, that has perpetual 24-7, 365, every hour of the year adoration. It's always open. It's always there just for you. And I think the third thing that we can do to grow in our spiritual life is we can make a holy hour once a week. I'm going to say that again. The third thing that we can do to make this the best year of our spiritual life is we can make a holy hour once a week. Now, you can do that at home. You can do that at the St. Drew Shrine here. You can do that at another church. You can do that in this church. You can do that in the Adoration Chapel. But what if we made a holy hour once a week? Once a week, we had an hour just you and Jesus just you and the Trinity, just you and the saints, just you and God. That is, is the third thing that we can do. That's my invitation for all of us today. Now, perhaps you can use that hour preparing for Sunday Mass or just talking to the Lord about what's in your heart, but I want to acknowledge that as a lot of us hear that invitation from me right now, what's going through your head is, Father Mark, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what to do. So I, lo I love you, and I just want to let you know that I struggle. This past week, the past couple of days, I struggle in my prayer life. And I just want to let you know, if you do also, that's okay. Don't be discouraged. It's a part of life. 
So I, I want to meet us where we are. A couple of things that I think can help us this week. If, if the third thing that we can do is make a holy hour once a week, I'm going to offer you some hope today. Number one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach a class this week. I'm going to teach a one-hour class this week on how to make a good holy hour. What are some practical, I'm talking practical things that you can do, teaching you some steps. You can do some things. I'm going to teach you how to make a good holy hour. I'm going to offer that three times this week. I'm going to offer that this Tuesday night from 6.30 to 7.30. I'm going to offer that. I'm also going to offer that after daily mass on Saturday morning. Maybe that's more convenient for your calendar. also going to do it live on the web. Maybe you can't make it here in the church, but after you put the kids down, you and your wife or your spouse or your husband or your your kids, you can just watch it live online. So three times this week, I'm going to teach a a little one-hour class on how to make a good holy hour. So if you don't know what to do as I and challenge all of us to pray for an hour a week, if you don't know what to do, hey, I'm going to meet you there, and I'm I'm going to equip you. I'm going to teach you how to do that. So don't be discouraged. In addition, I just want to encourage us to take advantage of the Adoration Chapel. I have a handout. As you exit the church today, the ushers have in the back of the church, the ushers have a handout. If, if you want that handout, it's there for you. It's, it's front and back. On the front, it's everything I'm going to teach in the class. So if you can't make the class or can't make the internet uh, teaching, just take the handout with you. It's got everything that you need steps it'll teach you right there you take that right to the to the chapel and you just go straight through the list on the back it's got a summary of the series and some other things that you can do especially signing up for our adoration chapel we've got some slots that are open there to help you with it so everything that you need to not be discouraged and to grow is waiting for you right there on that handout but i want to i just want to encourage you and tell you i believe in you like do not let discouragement win if you tried preparing for Sunday Mass the last two weeks and, and it didn't work or you got busy and you didn't, hey, next Sunday, let's do it together. I want to encourage you. Let's recommit to the first thing and let's prepare together as a family, regardless of where you've been. We're going to start fresh. Let's walk into Mass next Sunday ready. And if, if you tried to go to daily Mass this week and it, it, you, you couldn't make it, hey, fresh start. Let's all commit. Let's see if we can all go to one daily mass this week. I'm going to be here this week at every daily mass. I just encourage you to come. And let's pray this week. I believe in you. You can do it. Let's all commit to a holy hour this week. Um, Imagine if every one of us this year were spending an hour a week in prayer. Imagine if, if, if every one of us were in that adoration chapel or before the, the Lord and the Blessed Sacrament. Imagine if you were growing. You, your prayer life can be easier, I promise you. If you have a desire to grow with the Lord, he wants it more than you do. L- listen to the first reading. You know, we, we, we tossed out the discouragement of Jeremiah, right? Listen to the first reading. This is what he says. This is the rest of the story from the first reading today. He said, Jeremiah says, but even with all that, he says, there is a fire burning in my heart. Now, he sounded like a discouraged man, but he said, there's a fire burning in my heart, and I just want to let you know there is a fire burning inside the heart of Jesus for you, and there can be a fire in your heart. If you want this year to be the best year of your spiritual life, it can be, and that fire can be burning in your heart. And if you keep reading in Jeremiah, in the Bible, it stops at the first reading at Mass. But if you keep reading in the same chapter, just a couple verses later, he says, But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not prevail. For I will sing to the Lord and praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor. That's the God who's with us. Be not afraid. Be not discouraged. God wants this more than you do. He wants to teach us how to pray even if we get discouraged. And I'm with you in it. We're in it together. And just imagine what this year would look like if we all persevered through discouragement. 
Like, I'm, I love the fact that we're growing numerically, but I love the fact that you are growing spiritually. That's my passion. That's my focus. And I want that fire to burn in your heart. And imagine if this year we ended this, we went into Easter and Holy Week this year as a parish family on fire for him, hearing him. And imagine if your prayer was easier. Or if it was easy, and if all the intimidation you formerly had about trying to pray, if that, was, if that was blanketed, if it was easy, just imagine what life would look like. Jeremiah, he was pulled through the discouragement. I've been pulled through the discouragement just on yesterday morning, and God, he wants to pull you through the discouragement because he is with you every step of the way. So let's be not afraid. Just trust in the Lord in the midst of everything that he has in store for us. He wants this year to be the best year of your spiritual life.